In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening, everybody. I'm offering this Mass for you, the people of the parish. Palms which have already been blessed will be distributed at the end of Mass. You'll receive them as you leave. To give this Sunday its full title, we mark today Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. Previously, these events were commemorated over two Sundays, Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday. Today we remember the Lord's triumphal entry into Jerusalem and hear his Passion story. As we prepare to celebrate this liturgy, we pause to call to mind our sins and open ourselves to God's saving mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who is an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Today's first reading was written as the exile in Babylon was drawing to a close around 538 BC. The author paints a picture of one called the Suffering Servant, whom we'll meet on the other days of Holy Week, especially on Good Friday. This servant is the forerunner or mirror of image, image of Jesus the Messiah. With amazing accuracy, the prophet foretells not only his probable death, but also that of Jesus 500 years later. Our psalm continues in cruel detail this tragic event. The second reading is taken from one of St Paul's last letters known as the Captivity Epistles. They're the fruit of his profound meditation upon the one who claimed him for his own on his way to Damascus many years before. Jesus had first to suffer like a slave, claiming no dignity for himself. Only when reduced by us to the most humble state did God the Father raise him up to a state so high that all who came to recognise him would bend the knee to him in worship. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue, so that I may know how to reply to the wearied. He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face, against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help, so that I may, that, so that I am untouched by the insults. So too I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be ashamed. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusts in the Lord, let him save him. 
Let him release him if he is his friend. Many dogs have surrounded me. A band of wicked beasts have set me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O oh Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. I will tell, I tell of your name to my brethren and praise you where they are assembled. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All sons of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, Israel's sons. A second reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, yet Christ Jesus did not cling to equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the conditions of a slave, and became men as men are, and being as all men are, he was humbly yet, even accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. The Gospel Acclamation. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory, Christ was humbly yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all names. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. We've had instructions from the Bishops' Conference for the Easter Triduum services during this time of pandemic, and so you ask please not to join in as you traditionally would with the words of the Passion. I know you don't have the text in front of you. Also, we've been asked to read the shorter form of the Passion from St Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. First thing in the morning, the chief priests, together with the elders and the scribes, in short, the whole Sanhedrin, had their plan ready. They had Jesus bound and took him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Page 32. Are you the king of the Jews? He answered. It is you who say it. And the chief priests brought many accusations against him. Pilate questioned again. Have you not inquired at all? See how many accusations you are bringing against you. But the Pilate remained. Jesus made no further reply. At festival time, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone they asked for. Now a man called Barabbas was then in prison with the rioters who had committed murder during the uprising. When the crowd went up and began to ask Pilate the customary favour, Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he realised that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest handed Jesus over. The chief priest, however, had incited the crowd to demand that he should for them instead. And Pilate spoke again. But in that case, what am I to do with the man you call King of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify, Crucify him. And Pilate asked them, Why, what harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder, Crucify, Crucify him. So Pilate, anxious to placate the crowd, released Barabbas for them. Having ordered Jesus to be scared, 
handed him over to the crucified. The soldier led him away to the inner part of the palace, that is, the throne and called the cohort together. They dressed him up in purple, twisted some claws into a crown, and put it on him, and they began to lose him. Hail, hey, king of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed and spat on him, and they went down on their knees to do his homage. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the bed and dressed him in his own clothes. They led him out and crucified him. They went to the passerby, Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming into the country to carry his cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with men, but he refused it. Then they crucified him and shared off his clothing, casting lots to decide what each should get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The inscription given charged against him read, The King of the Jews, and they crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. The pacifying gave at him. They shook their heads and said, Ah, so you will destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, then save yourself. Come down from the cross. The chief priests and the scribes mocked him among themselves in the same way. They said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now for us to see it and believe. Even those who were crucified with him taunted him. When the sixth hour came, there was darkness over the whole land. At the end of the night hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. This means, My God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood by heard this, they said, Listen, he is calling Elijah. Someone ran and soaked a sponge in vinegar and put it on a reed, gave it to drink, saying, Wait and see if Elijah will come to take him down. But Jesus gave out a loud cry and breathed his last. And, and the veil of the temple was torn in two from the top to bottom. The centurion who was standing in front of him had seen how he had died, and he said, In truth, this man was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of our less fortunate characteristics as human beings is our unwillingness to let things go. Whether it's old hurts and resentments, we just won't forgive, or a reluctance to lose our status or position in life, frequently we're unwilling to let go of what we have. But today, through the powerful and dramatic scripture readings, we're reminded that our leader, the person from whom we take our name, was prepared to let go of everything for our sake. In the Gospel we hear how Jesus surrendered his human life, but as St Paul reminded us in the second reading, Jesus was also prepared to surrender his divinity for us when he came born as a baby. Perhaps when we hear how those around him betrayed Jesus, we can identify with how he must have felt. But even the worst of our sufferings pales into insignificance when we recall what Jesus went through for us. And yet Jesus was still able to forgive those who had put him through such torment. Over the coming days of Holy Week and the Easter Triduum, we will journey with Jesus. As we follow him, we should try to imitate his forgiveness of those who wished him harm. We profess our faith. I believe in one God, 
the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In his hour of need, Jesus cried out to his heavenly Father, in confidence, let us also make our needs known to God. That all members of the Church may keep this week holy, enter into Jesus' death and resurrection, and learn it as a pattern for their daily living. Lord, hear us. That world leaders may be courageous in their decisions that affect the good of all. Lord, hear us. That those suffering from injustice turn to God in their abandonment and receive comfort and peace. Lord, hear us. That each of us here may support each other this week so that our Easter joy may be complete. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For the repose of the soul of Mary Nelson, whose funeral takes place this week. Eternal rest, grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. In this moment of silence, we remember those needs kept in the quiet of our hearts. Merciful and ever-present God, you hear the prayers of those who cry out to you in their need. Never abandon us, but answer our prayers and bring us to share in your life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, 
we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners, and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Malcolm our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, 
graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you for ever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for Mass this evening, those of you here in church and those of you at home. Bye, God bless.